Okay, I received a question, how high do I bring the elbow during the left hook? All right, let's take a, a quick step back. I, I try not to give absolute answers to questions. Um, I think that if you say you have to do this or you have to do that, you risk turning your fighter into a robot where they go in there and they're programmed to do A, B, C, D, and E. But if they step in the ring and they encounter F and G, they're not gonna know how to adapt. I think it's much more valuable to train a fighter or train yourself as a fighter to go in there and think about what you're doing. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? And more important, what are the consequences of what I'm doing? So, as an example, you guys know that I favor a hard, fast jab. Something that our opponent has to respect and has to deal with. That's not saying you can't flick a jab out there. Go ahead and flick a jab out. Just understand it's going to become exponentially more difficult to A, hide anything behind that jab, or B, stop that person from doing what they want to do to me. All right, so maybe there's a better way. If I slip a hook and I end up in this position, okay, just understand that from that position, it's going to be hard to slip a second or third punch it's gonna be hard to return fire on that opponent, so maybe there's a better way. Okay, now that being said, where the elbow goes, that's pretty much a hard and fast rule. The elbow needs to track directly behind the fist on the hook. So it's gonna depend on what the trajectory is. If we're doing more of a left hook to the body, a low left hook, and that trajectory is in this direction, the elbow comes right behind it. You don't have to pick that up much. If we're trying to come right across somebody's head horizontally, we gotta pick that elbow up to meet it to come behind the fist. I don't know why we'd wanna throw a punch like this. I mean, we're susceptible to a counter left, we're susceptible to a counter right. But again, it's another one of those circumstances. What, what is the consequence of what I'm doing? Maybe it's better to throw that punch off from the side. Now the elbow, doesn't have to just work with the fist. The fist has to work with the elbow. So we don't want that fist drifting out either. If we're throwing a left hook and that fist drifts out, then we have that elbow power coming in this trajectory, the fist coming in this trajectory. All right, that's a discrepancy. We lose power there. We end up slapping the hook. All right, and this doesn't just apply to the left hook. This applies to the right hook left uppercut, right uppercut, the straight punches, so all of your punches. If I have my hand up on my fist and I want to throw a right hand, a straight right to my opponent, I need to pick that elbow up to come behind the fist. Same with the jab. I think there's this idea that we need to keep those straight punches down and in to protect the body. All right, there's no way we can get the elbow behind the punch. We end up pushing those punches. You know how you protect your body? Establish a strong jab. And what if the guy slips my jab? Well, we talked about this before. Jab him in the chest. Again, it's not gonna hurt the person, but it'll stop them from doing what they wanna do. And if they slip a jab to the chest, they're gonna be so far out of position, we don't even have to worry about it. So, I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. See you next week.